Uh, hey, I'm Özgün. I'm one of the founders at Citus Data. Prior to Citus, I was a software developer in the distributed systems engineering team at Amazon.com. Uh, today, I'm going to talk about Citus 5.0 and what we learned over the years in building it. Some of those lessons are also applicable in a broader context than just PostgreSQL or SQL. I have about 40 slides and it's a fairly technical talk. So if you have any questions, uh, please feel free to ask them. Here's a quick talk outline. And before we dive into the outline, I envision this as four small technical lightning talks uh, that all tie together. Uh, Marco informed me just like five minutes ago that he has a very cool demo, a futuristic demo of scaling out Oracle uh, through using Citus and Oracle foreign data wrappers. So this will be the first time where you see Oracle scaling out thanks to PostgreSQL. One adjustment I could make if everybody is cool with it is instead of four technical lightning talks, I could do three of them and that will give Marco enough time to show you something futuristic like from the future. What does everyone think? Four technical lightning talks or three technical lightning talks and one really cool demo. <laughs> well, the idea is you can take any database and scale it through Postgres. Yeah. Okay, so let's go with it. That will break the flow a bit. And, uh, oop, and my slides are ahead of me. Uh, that will break the flow a bit. So we'll go technical, like lightning talk two, three. We'll skip over five. We'll do five. And then Marco will do a really cool demo. And then I'm going to talk about three topics then that I think make Citus interesting from a technical standpoint. Since these are related but different topics, one way to think of it as it has three separate lightning talks. This way, if you're super bored during the talk, you just have to wait it out for another five minutes or so, and we'll be talking about something else. So first, I'm going to start with an example to highlight why certain computations are harder to scale than others. Then I'm going to talk about the challenges involved in building a logical and physical planner. And last, I'll shortly describe of Citus executes queries that have widely different requirements uh, from a distributed system standpoint. And then we'll conclude the talk with Marco's futuristic demo. Okay, let's get started. As a quick question prior to this talk, how many of you have heard of Citus? Okay, a little more than half. And how many of you attended the Citus talk at PGConf US? With uh, this will be with the part taken out very similar to the PGConf US talk, maybe about 60 to 70 percent similar. And the idea going back to Citus is Citus extends PostgreSQL to provide it with distributed functionality. Citus horizontally scales, and I'm not sure why this is going ahead of me, PostgreSQL across multiple machines using sharding and replication behind the covers. Citus's query engine parallelizes SQL queries across the machines in the cluster. And most importantly, Citus 5.0 is open source. If you'd like to try it out or if you have feedback for us, please hit us up over GitHub, Google forums, or email. Here's a quick architectural diagram of Citus 5.0. We have a metadata node and then the data nodes underneath. Uh, you load the Citus extension both on the metadata node and the worker node, so they look appear very similar to you. The user connects to and interacts with the metadata node here. And this is where you create your distributed tables. When you want to run a query against the cluster, you talk to the metadata node using standard PostgreSQL tools or libraries. This server then owns routing and parallelizing queries and farming them across the worker nodes in the cluster. The metadata node coordinates work and doesn't actually own any data. And each worker node actually keeps the actual data as small, sharded, and replicated tables. Okay, what are some good use cases for the Citus 5.0 architecture? In short, when you have a large data set and when you want to get answers from that data in human real time, that means typically in less than a second, you want to use Citus. Citus has dozens of deployments in production. For example, Cloudflare is a content delivery network that powers two million businesses. They capture 
400 terabytes of compressed events data per day, and they load and aggregate that events data within a CITOS cluster. They then provide analytical dashboards to the two million businesses they power. How many distinct IPs visited my website over the past minute, past five minutes, past day? What are the top countries that visited my business in the past year? You can also think of CITUS as extending your data warehouse with real-time capabilities. For example, Newstar uses Redshift as their data warehouse, and they'd like to augment it with real-time ingest and real-time querying capabilities. For that, they use CITUS alongside their Redshift deployment. Okay, with this install introduction, let's get started with our lightning talks. In the first lightning talk, I'll start by describing a project that I worked on prior to CITUS and what we learned from it. We also talked about these learnings in our blog. Out of curiosity, how many people in here have come across our blog? Right there. Okay, going all the way back before CITUS, uh, the first distributed database that I worked on was called CSPIT. This project was led by a visionary architect and involved some of the smartest developers I knew at Amazon. And we knew quite a bit about distributed systems. In fact, we easily knew about the next eight or nine slides or so. Still, the project, CSPIT, never saw the light of day. On the technical side, we scaled out to six, seven, let's say eight, ten machines, and then started running into scalability problems. When CSPIT didn't scale, one key learning was about a technical, a theoretical understanding of which computations are hard to scale. Taking a step back, you can solve all distributed systems problems in one of two ways, and we already knew this. One, you bring your data to where your computation is, so you pull all that data and you do the computation there. Two, you push your computation down to where your data is. So here's an example. Let's say that you keep your sales data in a distributed data store, and you want to know your total revenue. One can answer this simple question in one of two ways. And I, in here, I'm expressing the question as a select, a SQL query, but the idea applies to any query language, actually. So you can express this computation the first way by pulling all the data to a particular node and then running the original query on top of this data. What's the problem with this picture? Yes. So it doesn't uh, scale because network is your primary bottleneck, essentially, in this picture. And then you're overloading your primary bottleneck. So you're moving a lot of data. The second part is you're not paralyzing the computation. You're actually, by virtue of pulling all the data to your computation, you're still running like a single process, so you're still going at it like you're not paralyzing this computation. So this second diagram solves those two scalability issues, the network and then the parallelization. Here, we take the select query, we push the sums to where the data segments are, and then we compute them there, we get the intermediate results and we add them up. We had to do a final sum on the coordinator node, but that was simple enough. So this way we paralyzed it, and then also we removed the network bottleneck. Now let's look at a slightly more complex computation. Say we are looking to compute the average order value. In this case, can we ask each one of those nodes to average their results out, and then average out the final computation? If you do it right, like we can't just average, average, and then average. Uh, we instead have to do a transformation where each node does a sum and a count, and then we do a sum of the sums and a sum of the counts. Does that make sense? And this was a simple transformation because we took an average, and instead of doing average, average, we made like we made a simple transformation. But the question is, why did we need to make this transformation? Because in some, we didn't make a transformation in average. We had to make this transformation. Why? Why was the sum easier to parallelize than the average? 
because one computation is commutative by its nature and the other one isn't. How many people in here have heard of the commutative property? Okay, a good chunk. Basically what that means is A plus B equals B plus A, but A over B doesn't equal to B over A. Like you can change the, in one, if it's commutative, you can change the ordering of operation. In the other one, you can't. If it's not commutative, you can't. And when you're pushing your computations to your data, you're in fact transforming your computations into their commutative form. And if you're building a database, you probably have a query language that expresses each query in some logical form. The commutativity property will hold and help with any well-defined language. Here I, I am picking SQL as an example because it's very well studied. SQL uses relational algebra to express a query. And when you send a query to your database, that query gets parsed and converted into a logical query tree. For example, if your query has a where clause in it, that's a filter node in the query tree. If the query has an aggregate function, that gets expressed as an extended operator node in relational algebra. And the mapping from SQL to relational algebra and relational algebra operators have widely been discussed, so I therefore won't dive into the details. And instead, we'll look at a very simple SQL query. This simple query joins the sales table with a small nation table to select rows that meet a particular criteria. The query then computes total sales volume across all these selected rows. Now let's take a look at the distributed logical query plan for this query. At a first glance, this query tree looks like a standard relational algebra node tree. If you look closely, however, you'll note two differences. One is that this query tree has two collect nodes near its leaves. This new operator type collects the data underneath it into a single place. So in this context, we would pull this table's data and then this table's data into a single machine. And tying this back to the beginning of this lightning talk, these collect nodes pull up the two tables data into one place, and then we do the joint filtering and computation. But we already know this doesn't scale. So let's now put together our knowledge on scaling and network IO, commutative operations, and relational algebra. Does the collect operator in here commit with the filter? Yes, it does. So pull it up. Does it commit with the project? Yes. So keep pulling it up. And in fact, there is a simple way to optimize this logical plan. Pull up collect nodes and push down computation nodes in the tree as long as the commutative and distributive properties hold. This diagram shows the logical query plan once we apply these optimizations. And then this optimized plan has many of the computations pushed down in the query tree and only collects a small amount of data at the very end. This enables scalability. And much more importantly, this logical plan formalizes how relational algebra operators scale in distributed systems and why why they scale. And that's one key takeaway we had from building a distributed database before. In the land of distributed systems, commutativity is king. Model your queries with respect to the king, and they will scale. On to the next talk. Are there any Russians in the audience? Yeah, any Russians? I see Oleg there, so there is at least one. Uh, and, and the reason I'm asking this is whenever we show these diagrams to developers from Russia, we get the question, one or two examples don't make a proof. Can you prove that what you're showing me in here is complete? And that's a really good question. How do you go from a few examples to a framework that's complete? Has someone thought of this holistically and built the entire foundation for distributed relational algebra. And after failing with CSPIT, scaling out like with CSPIT, I went to Google and typed relational algebra, distributed systems, commutative, associative, and distributive property. Google returned this paper from 1983 as the top link, correctness of query execution strategies in distributed databases. This paper is visionary. It's at least three de decades ahead of its time. Why would you even think about distributed databases in 1983? 
the authors were professors from Italy visiting Stanford at the time, and they laid out an entire theoretical framework for distributed relational algebra and proved it. And then the paper actually builds on two simple ideas. The first idea is that all relational algebra operators in their paper are defined to execute on distributed relations. The other idea is that multi-relational algebra, as they define it, introduces collect and repartition operators. The collect operator is simple. It takes data that's logically distributed underneath and collects all of that data in one place. The repartition operator is more complex. It takes a table partitioned on one column and repartitions that table's data on another column in a distributed cluster. So for example, let's say that you have an events table partitioned on time. The repartition operator could then result in a distributed shuffle across that cluster and create an events table that's partitioned on another column, say user ID. And then with the idea of defining relational algebra operators on distributed relations and adding collect and repartition operators, this paper then maps out a formal proof. First, the paper carefully maps out commutative and distributive properties with these operators. This first matrix in here examines the commutative property between unary operators in distributed relational algebra. For example, you have a filter and a collect node, and this matrix shows whether they commute with each other. You either see a yes, no, or special conditions in this matrix. These special conditions, which the paper also maps out, you see them as these S and Cs, uh, indicate that the two operators commute if and only if you apply certain uh, transformations. This second matrix shows the distributive property rules between unary and binary operators in relation to algebra. On the left-hand side, you have the unary operators, and on the top, you have the binary operators such as a join. And again, you have a yes, no, or special conditions in this matrix. And why are we looking at these matrices? We're looking at them to push down the competition nodes in relation to algebra tree and pull up collect and repartition nodes. So when you are in that tree and when you're looking to push stuff up or pull down, if they commit, you can do it. If not, you can't. And similarly, the paper also maps out and proves all other properties between these 10 relational algebra operators. And I read the paper like 20 times, and we based Cytosus Query Planner on this paper, and have been building on it for years. The only issue we could find was a small typo on figure six in the paper, so it's like that complete. To recap, the primary takeaway in this lightning talk is that multi-relational algebra offers a complete foundation for distributing SQL queries. As a side note, Citus today doesn't support the entire spectrum of SQL queries, and it's best studied suited for use cases where you'd like to ingest and analyze lots of data in real time. So I'll take a checkpoint now at the end of this lightning talk. Uh, I'm 18 minutes into the talk. Are there any questions on this, on what we covered so far? Is the pace okay? Okay, then we may just have enough time for all four technical lightning talks and Marco's demo. Okay, on to our next lightning talk then. The multi-relational algebra paper provided us with a distributed logical plan. Now, how do we go about executing this logical plan? And taking a step back, I'd like to reiterate an important point that relate to this paper that relates on to Citus. A logical plan and a physical plan aren't the same thing. If you have a logical plan, you still need to map it into your execution primitives. For example, table is a logical operator and defines your data source. Sequential scan, index scan, and bitmap heap scan are different ways you could read data from that table, and those are physical operators. As another example, join is a logical operator. You have two tables and you're joining them together. Very logical. Hash join, nested loop join, and merge join are three different ways to execute a join operation in the context of a single machine. In practice, most systems don't make this differentiation and extend on the primitives that come with the underlying system. 
For example, Greenplum and Redshift start with physical operators and they retrofit or extend physical operators for local or distributed execution. If you have a logical plan, and in this case we do because we went at it from a, okay, how do we scale this out and let's formalize this and then execute this way, you now need to map that logical plan into a physical one in order to execute it. And Citus does this mapping in a straightforward way. Multi-relational algebra defines three types of operations. Relational algebra operations that operate on distributed relations, collect, and repartition. And Citus takes all standard relational operators and then maps them over to SQL. That is, everything in your logical plan that isn't a collect or repartition operator could be collapsed into and expressed as a SQL statement. For the collect operator, you can just use the standard copy command. For repartition, mapping it is slightly more complex and I'll describe that shortly. And before describing the repartition, the question is, what are the implications of defining the physical execution primitives this way? That is, what happens when we collapse most logical operations into SQL statements? The most practical implication of defining SQL as a physical operator, and what that means is instead of having table scan, we're now using SQL as a physical operator, is that it decouples distributed execution from local execution's details. This way, Citus can first plan to minimize network IO in your distributed cluster, and then hand over SQL queries uh, to Postgres for it to execute. Postgres could then pick the best plan that minimizes this IO. Another implication is that Citus can automatically pick up new features and improvements in Postgres. If you're for looking forward to parallel query improvements in 9.6, that just works. If you'd like to use LLVM or vectorized execution for analytical queries, that also works. Any questions on this one? Yes. So what we do is we, it starts by doing that logical plan where it first lays out the logical uh, tree, the relational algebra tree. And in that tree, uh, the collect and repartition operators either are already introduced or uh, they come into the picture as part of the logical plan optimization. Once you have that, anything that falls in between a collect or a repartition node, you can take that Give it, to Post, uh, give it to Postgres SQLs like dparse or parser to create a SQL statement and then create tasks and then send them over. And then obviously you know where to send them over, you know how they're located, like the, the location, uh, co-location, all of that stuff comes into the picture. That has implications practically in like when you're doing subqueries, when you're doing joins. Uh, I didn't touch into them, but yes, that's like you need to have some information of that data is laid out even as you're like building those SQL statements. No, no. Like it basically is we take the most optimized logical plan and then there is a step prior to it which is where we do how much data are we going to shuffle. So it's basically we're looking to minimize network IO in those like join order planning and then logical planning steps. And in the physical one, we're mostly like farming out the remaining work to PostgreSQL in, and then we expect it to make the best optimized local decisions at that point. Any other questions? Yes, yes. Mm -hmm.
No, we create the mini plans, logical plan, you map out to the three uh, physical execution primitives, SQL, and then there we set, tell po a PostgreSQL, this is the biggest chunk of query that I can give you for you to execute locally in one chunk. And then um, SQL collect or map reduce, which is the repartition operator, and then PostgreSQL does its own thing. So we decouple the logical planning from the physical planning and then the local execution planning that way. Yes, yes, it's a distributed logical plan. And then that's what the MRA paper actually looks to scale out. It says, okay, if you build your logical plan, distributed logical plan that way, then here's the proof for it to be complete and for it to fully scale out. Uh, I'll answer the question shortly and then I'd be happy to chat about it afterwards. So PostgreSQL physical operators don't have the notion of commutative and distributive properties as they are applied in the MRA paper. So either somebody would need to do the mapping and then there are about 10 logical operators and I think Postgres has about 50 physical operators. So either some, somebody would need to do that mapping in this context or in the absence of it, like that's why we're making that abstraction because there isn't that study for the PostgreSQL physical operators, not that I know for the commutativity and the distributivity of these operations. And we're instead doing it on a, like a 10 by 10 matrix, that's what the MRA paper does, rather than doing it for the 50 physical operators. So we're decoupling the two from here. We're saying, okay, PostgreSQL has physical operators for local execution, and then Citus does this for the distributed physical plan. I'll skip over the next slides just to give Marco enough time. Uh, this slide talks about SQL as a physical execution primitive. I'd be happy to chat about the questions afterwards, specifically uh, about this lightning talk. I am just going to touch upon repartitioning in here. Uh, the basic idea is we have a table that's partitioned on time, the orders table, and now we want to do a uh, count distinct on customer ID. How do we push this down? How do we parallelize this? Can we just push down the count distinct IDs, customer IDs for 2013, 2014, 2015 and add them up? We can't uh, because the distinct customer IDs across these three shards may be overlapping. And then to effectively parallelize this query, you need to do repartitioning. This is the repartition operator executed. Basically, it takes the orders 2013, 14, and 15. Each table gets repartitioned. You see these files in here. On the customer IDs, there is a distributed shuffle. They get merged, and then you can push this computation count distinct over to here. And repartition in a logical plan is a fairly simple operation. This is the optimized logical plan for that query. You take the orders table, repartition it on the cost ID column, round parallel count, uh, cost, uh, distinct cost IDs, collect the results and add them up. So it's a very, very simple operation. Where you map that logical uh, repartition operator into the physical plan, then it becomes trickier. You need to execute a map, distributed shuffle and reduce. And then the physical uh, plan can therefore be like way more involved. I took out the part, just the part on the repartition operator the idea in here is the physical operator tells you how you're going to execute this, takes those simple concepts and the mathematical properties of those concepts and then overlays how you can actually execute them. So this is just a portion of the repartition operator mapped over to the physical plan. The takeaway, the quick takeaway from this lightning talk is that a logical plan is not a physical plan. And the way you define your distributed physical plan operators impacts how coupled you want to become with the underlying database's local execution primitives.
Okay, we talked about building a logical plan and then mapping that onto a physical one. Last, I'll very briefly touch upon how you execute these plans in a distributed environment. The challenge here, once again, is different workloads. For example, you may have short requests that require high throughput and low latency. In this workload, you want to execute the query as soon as it comes into your system. You also probably want to cache connections in between the machines to not pay for the overhead of connection setup. In a second workload, you need to send hundreds of asynchronous query fragments to your shards, merge results, and then give them back to the user in real time. The user may also ask that the database uses sketch algorithms and provide approximate results in order to meet the query latency expectations. And then in a third workload, you may have long running select queries that join large tables together. In such a workload, the database should be able to automatically handle mid-query failures on the user's behalf. In other words, different workloads introduce different trade-offs that become more pronounced in a distributed system. So how do you go about this? Instead of trying to handle different workloads in one executor, Citus comes with three distributed executors. The router executor handles short requests. Those are high throughput writes or high throughput reads. The real-time executor handles select queries that need to execute in under a second. And the task tracker executor runs queries that get parallelized to hundreds of thousands to millions of tasks. Any questions on this one? Okay, in conclusion, distributed databases is really hard. When you're building a distributed system, you care about two principles. One, you need to push down computations to minimize network I.O. Two, you need to handle software or hardware failures. That's a side note. And in these lightning talks, we talked about pushing down computations to scale out and offered a complete theoretical framework for doing so. We then showed how Citus uses that framework and executes queries in a distributed setting. Citus is open source, and today we just released Citus 5.1. We're looking for your feedback to make it better. So if you have any questions or comments, please do ping us over GitHub, Google Groups, or email. Thank you. I'll take one question and then hand it over to Marco, or I'll take a question as I'm handing it over to Marco. Yep. User defined functions. So you uh, do map and reduce the user defined functions. There is one for the map. Are we good? <clears throat> All right. For some reason, I was going to always ask me to prepare a really crazy demo, and he also makes it so interesting that I kind of have to do it. Um, so this, this time was, could you scale out Oracle using Citus? And turns out you can. Um, so imagine you have a large database. and doesn't have to be Oracle. could be MySQL. could be Postgres. Um, and you have this one large table which keeps growing and growing and it no longer fits on one machine or maybe doesn't fit in memory on one machine. Your queries are getting slow. So um, what I did here is I set up a bunch more, uh, like one thing you could do then in that case, you could do sharding, right? You could uh, spread the data over multiple machines. So I set up a bunch of Oracle nodes uh, and they all have some part of the data. And I used really tiny nodes actually because I didn't have time to load in a lot of data. So these are all T2 small instances on RDS. And, uh, but you know, doing sharding yourself is kind of hard and you have to collect information from different places. Um, so I set up uh, another node on EC2 and installed uh, Citus uh, 
on Postgres. So Citus is an extension. I used the 5.1. And um, I, I'm going to use that to actually kind of get one global view of these four databases on which I can run queries and run them in parallel. So what I did was, um, this is my sort of distributed table. So I wrote, already set things up, but you would normally call um, this function to make this table distributed. And then, um, well, for really funky use cases like this, you have to do some manual stuff with the metadata to make it work. Normally, you make a hash partition table, and it works nicely. Um, but basically, I created four shards on the machine itself. So usually, you have the picture Özgün showed. You have workers, and they have shards, which are Postgres tables. Now, um, I, I actually put the tables on the master itself, so it's kind of going to connect back to itself. And these are actually Oracle foreign data wrappers using the Oracle FTW extension. And so they point to these four different Oracle uh, servers. And they all have the same table, a customer reviews table. But they all contain about one year of data. So every server represents one year. Um, so now having this distributed table, I can, um, let me see if I can find a nice looking query. Um, I can run table, I can, can run queries on this table. And this is executed in parallel, uh, where part of the work is actually being done by Oracle. Part of the work is being done by four uh, backend processes uh, that handle part of the grouping and the counting. And part of the work is done by the master. And since this is 5.1, I can uh, actually do an explain on this query. The explain always looks a bit ugly. But um, this more or less shows you like some of the things I was going to talk about. First, there's like the work that has been pushed down, which here is called the distributed query. And it's showing uh, one of the tasks that happens on one of the workers. I can also make it show all the tasks. And uh, I can see which query it's sending to Oracle. So that's the work Oracle is doing. Then um, now, because foreign data wrappers can't push down a lot of stuff yet. But then um, the group, it actually does a group by an account on the like worker node. Here the worker is the master itself, so it's kind of confusing. But uh, and so it already pre-groups all the data in these buckets. It's grouping by review rating, I believe. And then finally it gathers that. Like there's only five different review ratings in this data set. So from every node it gathers five rows and then it merges those together. So it sums up the counts for every review rating and then you get the, uh, the final result. Okay. Um, now it's kind of interesting if I also had like uh, put the entire table on uh, one Oracle node called custom reviews full here. I'm not going to say how long this query takes but it takes longer. Um, so actually, just by setting up Citus, I was able to paralyze uh, this query and speed it up quite significantly. Because now, for Citus, uh, like there's only a small bit of data on every node, and it fits in memory. And I, I'm querying it in parallel. Uh, I can do other, what else did I have? Look up. So I didn't put any indexes on, on any of these tables, kind of just to give a sort of nice performance comparison. Obviously, like if you're always doing lookups by product ID or something like that, um, you probably want to have indexes. But especially for larger data sets, um, you know, it really becomes a problem to have everything on one node. So being able to scale out and push down computation to, your, uh, <coughs> to, the, to where the data is, is, is really very helpful. All right. Yeah. Did you just make Oracle a distributed database now, Marco? I did. Yeah, cool. <laughs> and, and thanks to Postgres. Thanks to Postgres. Yeah. Any questions on the demo or on the talk? How many million dollars do you have to pay Oracle to get the master back to you? I can't answer that question. <laughs> <laughs> the question was how many million dollars would it take to get Oracle to build this? Um, anyone's guess. <laughs>
it took me um, a few hours of trying to set up Oracle and about five minutes of doing it on Citus. <laughs> All right.